Okay, continuing on, here are some examples to get you guys moving with um, how the circle actually works. So I have up here, just for our reference, again, standard form for the equation of a circle for both center at 0, 0 and center at somewhere other than 0, 0. So we want to, in our examples, um, if we're given the center and the radius, we want to write an equation for the circle and then graph it. Okay, so let's start with, now keep in mind, you actually don't need the equation to graph. You need the center and you need the radius. That's all you need to graph a circle, but um, sometimes you'll be given an equation and you have to be able to identify the center and radius and then graph from there. So we're just going to start out by writing an equation and then graphing, okay? So if we look this first example, r equals 3, so the radius is 3 and the center is at 0, 0. So if we look up here, standard form for the equation of a circle with center at 0, 0 is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So that's where we're going to start. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, so the fact that there's nothing being subtracted from or added to the x and the y individually means that we've taken care of the center at zero zero part all we need to do is take the radius and plug it in so the radius is three so watch how easy this is very easy so we keep the x squared the y squared the same we take the radius and plug it in where it says r so equals three squared okay so then all we have to do is simplify from here so three squared is nine so the e equation of our circle is x squared plus y squared equals nine so now we go back and make sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to so we write an equation and then graph it so now let's go ahead and draw a graph okay so we need the x-axis we need the y-axis okay so if the center is at zero zero we're going to start by putting a dot there that's always where you want to start with all conic sections to graph them is at the center. Okay, so the trend throughout all of these is going to be generally the same. The process changes a little bit because we have different shapes, but you always start by putting the center on the graph. Then, if the radius is 3, if we think back to geometry, radius means the distance from the center of the circle to the outside. So we're going to take our center and move 3 units to the right, put a dot, 3 units up, put a dot, three units to the left, put a dot, and three units down, and then draw the best circle we can through it. Right? Easy. Okay, so let's keep on moving. Again, please make sure you guys are writing questions down in the margins so that you can ask them in class tomorrow. Okay, we'll have some time in the very beginning to do a little bit of a Q&A session. All right, so same set of directions here. We are given a radius and a center of a circle. We want to write the equation for the circle, and then we want to graph it. So now we have a situation where instead of having a center at 0, 0, you can see here that the center is at negative 3, 7. So we want to take the center at h comma k. Remember, h stands for the x-coordinate of the center, and y, I'm sorry, k stands for the y-coordinate of the center. And we want to take those numbers and plug them in here. Okay, so let's start with that. So we're just going to just copy this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared down onto our paper. And then we're just going to go through and again, plug things in. So h represents the x-coordinate of the center. k represents the y-coordinate of the center. So let's actually go through and plug those in. So x minus, it's a negative 3, so some of you who just want to jump ahead and make that a plus, go right ahead and do that. And the k is 7, so y minus 7 squared. And then again, the radius is 5, so we're just going to plug that in. And now we want to go through and make sure that we have it completely simplified. So a negative right next to another negative turns into a positive. So make that a positive. y minus 7, that's about as... Uh, simplified as that's going to get. So we'll leave that the same. And then 5 squared is 25. So that's the equation of the circle. And now let's go ahead and draw the graph. So if we know that the center of the circle is going to be at negative 3, positive 7, we don't want to make our axes centered at 0, 0. We're going to have to be up and to the left a little bit. So let's make sure that we take that into account when we're drawing our coordinate system here. Okay, so x-coordinate, or excuse me, x-axis and y-axis, and 
So again, we always start with the center. The center in this case is negative 3, positive 7. So we go to the left 3 and up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and put the center there. Then the radius in this case is 5. So from the center, we're going to go 5 units to the right, 5 units to the left, 5 up and 5 down, and then connect all of those points with a circle. Okay? So from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the right, back to the center, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, and we're going to connect those. Not the best circle on the planet, but you guys get the picture, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next type of example that you all are going to see. Okay, now you might end up with some problems in your homework that have fractions or they have radicals to begin with for the radius. That doesn't mean that you're doing things any differently. You just have to approximate a little bit more when you're graphing. Okay, all right, so now, again, I've got the, uh, the standard forms up here for reference as we work through these problems. All we're being asked to do in the next few examples is find the center and the radius, okay? So... If we look, this one, anytime you see something being added to or subtracted from x, you know that you have a center that's somewhere other than 0, 0. It's only when you have x squared by itself or y squared by itself that you have a center at 0, 0, or 0, and some other coordinate, okay? So what we want to do is look at the um, numbers that are being added to and subtracted from x and y, and remember those represent h and k. Okay, so that's how we're going to find the center. So because the relationship that we have here is x minus h and then y minus k, the only way we're going to end up getting a plus 1 here is if we have x minus negative 1. So the x coordinate for the center is actually negative 1. And then the same thing with the y. The only way that we're going to get y minus 3 is if we plug in a positive 3 for the k coordinate. Okay, so the center is at negative 1 positive 3. So one, just kind of an easy way to remember it, is you always flip the signs of whatever is inside the parentheses to find the center. Okay, so that's the first piece of it. And then we know that the number on the right-hand side, super easy here, the number on the right-hand side represents the radius squared. Okay, so the radius squared in this case equals 4. So the way we get r by itself, the opposite of squaring, we learned this a long time ago, the opposite of squaring is taking the square root of both sides. So the radius in this case is 2. Ta-da! Not too bad, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Same set of instructions, but a different problem. In this case, I didn't want to waste a whole other piece of paper, so sorry for that. That is not part of the problem. Okay, so in this case, we kind of have a combination of these two scenarios going on. We've got x squared by itself, and then we have y with something added to it. So that's, we are looking at a combination of both of these. So we're again going to look at these numbers to find the center, and if there's nothing being added to or subtracted from x, then it's safe to assume or recognize that the center, um, the coordinate of the x, the x coordinate is going to be 0, okay, because there's nothing being added to or subtracted from it. And then with the y, again, the only way that we're going to get y plus 2 is if we have y minus negative 2 to begin with. Because remember, the relationship starts out as y minus k, and k represents the um, y coordinate of the center of the circle. Okay, so that means, again, easy rule to follow, flip it. Flip the sign of whatever's in the parentheses. So it's 0, negative 2, that's half of it. And then, if the number on the right, right represents the radius squared, then the opposite of squaring is square root, and the radius in this case is 3. Right? Questions? Yeah, that's right. I'm so used to asking that in class. So, no, no questions. Write them down in the margins, and then we will address them tomorrow in class. All right. So last problem. Last problem, and then I'm going to give you a few extra credit problems so that you can try them on your own. 
Okay, this one looks like a big giant mess. I think we all can agree on that. So we're, we have the x squared and the y squared here. So it looks sort of similar to the center at zero, zero piece, but then we have all of these other crazy terms there. So the goal in this problem is to get, get this to look like one of these two forms. So we don't have a bunch of extra stuff in there. Okay, so the way that we're going to accomplish this, so just work with me here again, write down any questions as you think of them, but we want to group together the x's and group together the y's and then get anything that doesn't have an x or a y attached to it to the opposite side of the equal sign, okay? So let's first do that. So let's add 29 to both sides, those cancel out, and group together x squared plus 8x, leave some space in there, we're going to be using that space in a minute. Same thing with the y's, y squared minus 4y, leave some space, and then equals 0 plus 29 is 29. So, <clears throat> remember back when we were learning completing the square, I said, we're going to use this again. You have to remember this. Well, this is where it comes back to revisit us. I'm not going to say haunt, because I know that's what you're all thinking, but it's not haunting us. Okay, we're just revisiting. Okay. So let's just quickly review. If I want to complete the square, x squared plus 8x, all I have to do is take half of 8, which is 4, and 4 squared is 16, and I add that right here. So that creates a perfect square trinomial. Remember to do that, to make sure the equation is still balanced, I have to add 16 to the other side as well. Now I want to complete the y square as well. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so I add 4 over here, okay? So perfect square trinomials, remember they factor so that they should look something like this, okay? So we take x squared, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 16 is 4, and it's positive because we have a plus right here. Same thing with this one, the square root of y squared is y, the square root of 4 is 2. Because this is a minus, we bring that minus down. On the right hand side, we add all this together to get 49. And now we have it in a form that looks very similar to center at h, k. Not very similar, it's actually exactly the same. So this is our equation. Now to find the center, we're going to look at these two numbers. So the center, again, flip the signs, flip them, opposite signs of what's here. So the center is at negative 4, comma, positive, whoops positive 2. Sorry about that. I lost my pen there. It got away from me. Negative 4, positive 2. Okay, and then again, the number on the right-hand side, that represents the radius squared. So if the radius squared is 49, opposite of squaring is square root, so the radius here is 7. Okay, so that would say, I, that's about as complicated as um, these problems get. So, Again, please make sure that you have written all your questions down in the margin. Feel free to go back and relook at any of these if you would like. Um, and then let me give you guys some extra credit problems so that you can work through them tonight if you would like some extra credit. Had to get rid of the math money, so this is the alternative at this point. So the extra credit that you are able to do for tomorrow is these four problems. And I'm going to cut it off there and... Again, I hope you guys wrote down all your questions. I will see you all tomorrow in class.